In this video, we're going to go over each of the case elements to get you familiar with all the elements available in Theta. Inside Theta in the Design tab, you'll have all the different elements currently available in Theta. We're planning on adding and expanding as we go, so stay tuned for updates on, and the addition of additional elements. We'll select all the elements in this case so that we can walk through each one, one by one, and talk about the different features. The case information element is primarily used to provide instructions for the learner as well as case history information for your simulated patient. You can use the case information section to type out that information and during the actual testing the student will be able to type in that box to add additional insights so feel free to ask questions for your learners inside this case information that need to be answered. Any case element that has these sort of open response systems has a feedback option. Whatever you type in the feedback box won't be visible during the testing, but it will be available on the report that gets created upon submission. You can use this to provide instantaneous feedback to your learners as they go without you having to be there to provide it. For example, here you could give specific advice relevant to the case history, or you can provide answers to the questions that you ask in the case information side. Remember, during the testing, the learner will only be able to see what's written in the case information section, not what's written in the feedback, but the feedback will appear on their report to give them comments on their performance. In the otoscopy module, you'll see the drop downs where you can choose different categories of otoscopy images that we have prepared for you. Click on the image for a preview so you can see what your learner will see during testing. Note that if you're designing in a template mode, the learner could get any of the images within that category. If you're designing a fixed case, they'll get the exact image that you've specified. Below the images, you'll find an area for a description and a feedback. For each ear, you can provide a description of the tympanic membrane or the ear canal or other relevant information for the user to see. You can also leave this blank and ask the user in the instructions on the case information tab to provide their own description of what they see that's relevant for that specific ear. Then, in the feedback section, you can provide your description of key landmarks or key aspects of the photo that you hoped that they saw during testing. This way, they can try to write their own description of otoscopy, and then you can provide instantaneous feedback for the key landmarks that you hope that they noticed. We also have the option for you to upload more images. If you have otoscopy images, we're always looking to grow our otoscopy bank. You can click submit your own and upload photos that we'll vet and then upload to the appropriate category for our site. We hope that you'll consider donating some images to Theta. To see what it will look like as a learner, you can click on each otoscopy picture to add this black mark. This simulates not looking into the ear canal. Bring your cursor over the image that you want to see and then click, press and hold the mouse button. This will show you a little preview of the image. This is like looking through a small speculum at a portion of the eardrum. You'll have to move around the speculum to see the entire e eardrum to make sure that you're visualizing all key landmarks and aspects of the image. In the tympanometry element, you use the drop downs to select your tympanogram type and then you can preview that tympanogram by clicking the play button for that ear. This will draw a tympanogram to make sure that it looks like what you're expecting. If you're designing a case as a template, every single time you run the temp, it will be slightly different, but it will always be the same type. If you're doing a fixed case, these values will stay exactly the same, and every time you run the temp, it will be exactly what you've designed. You can also use these buttons to turn on and off the normative range box. You can control what the normative range is using your settings, which we'll go over in another video. The acoustic reflex thresholds element creates acoustic reflex patterns that match different disorder types. You can use the ART type to select a specific pathology and choose which ear or ears would be affected to automatically design a profile that matches that pathology. You can also change each specific threshold if you'd prefer. For example, lots of sites don't test at 4000 Hz, so you can change these values to don't test at 4000 if you only want reflex testing to be performed at 500, 1000, and 2000. The levels here are that the reflexes will be were not tested, do not test, within normal limits, elevated thresholds, and absent thresholds. You can control what levels classify as within normal limits, elevated, and absent in the settings. The audiogram element takes you to the audiogram designer page. 
In this page, you use the drop-downs to select the minimum degree and the maximum degree of loss, the configuration, the type, and the WRS expected score for each ear. You can choose symmetrical to change both ears at the same time to save you a few clicks in designing your audiograms. If you don't like seeing the two ears separated out, you can unsplit the audiogram to overlay them. Again, note that every time you create an audiogram, you'll get slightly different thresholds that match the specific profile that you've created, only if you're using template mode. If you change the case to be fixed, then the thresholds that you see are exactly the thresholds that will save with the test. There are also useful overlays, such as the speech sounds and the degrees of loss, which are useful in generating images that you can use in your lectures. To get a picture of the current audiogram, just hover over the upper right corner of the audio and you'll see a camera image that says download plot as a PNG. If you click that, you'll get a high res image that you can use in your slideshow or other educational materials. The last element to talk about is the impressions. This looks a lot like the case information section because you can ask your learners to write up a report or answer several questions in the impressions section. You can use what your learners write in this section to aid you in debriefing them on their simulation experience. You can also answer your own questions in the feedback section to give them instantaneous feedback on what you were looking for or hoping that they noticed about the case and the questions you asked in the impression section. Remember that the questions that you ask in the impressions will be visible, but whatever you write in the feedback will only show up on the report. After you've designed all your case elements, you can save that case for later or you can jump right into it. So you can encourage your learners to design their own cases and then start them right away. It just takes a few clicks. If you don't like your design, you can scrap it and start over from the beginning, or just click back to the other elements on the left-hand navigation panel to go through and make changes until you've got the perfect case that you want to design. On the last element of the designer is where you'll find the ability to change the case from a template to a fixed case, or from a practice to an exam case. In exam cases, the ability to see the normative range for tympanometry and to view your thresholds as you go in audiometry are disabled. In practice mode, you can check your work as you go or use the normative range box in tympanometry to see if you're on the right track. And that's pretty much it. Those are the six basic elements that we have right now. We're planning on adding more elements and we're excited to release new features in the future for you to use in all of your Theta simulation needs.